God is good, isn't he? Amen. I said God is good, isn't he? Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. We want to go to the Lord together in prayer. We have several prayer requests today. Amen. Hilda Sailor, Sailor's mother, 78 years old, had all her teeth pulled, and now she's in a situation where her new teeth is giving her some problems. So we want to remember that she uh, needs a touch from the Lord. And most people, you know, in situations like that, they have problems and trials that move in their lives, and it's and it, and it's difficult, you know. They can't eat, they can't talk right, things like that happen. We want to remember her in prayer. We want to remember Rose Henry has been sick you know, with some health problems. We want to pray for her. Um, Forrest Murray still needs prayer. I just want to remember him in prayer. Um, sure, sure, Jada's tonsils still hurt. No longer feeling as bad as she was. Amen. 
Um, so we want to remember those in prayer as well and continue to remember all of our prayer requests that have been mentioned throughout the, you know, the last few weeks. I want to remember Alexander today. Uh, he's not feeling well. Uh, has had a fever, been throwing up all night last night and into today as well. Um, so we want to remember him in prayer. Sister Christine is there with him tonight. Amen. If you have a special unspoken need, I uh, didn't get a chance to write it down on a card, but just want to slip your hand up in the air. God knows the problems and the situation. If you need prayer in your body tonight, make sure you make your way to the front. I'm going to try something a little different tonight. All men on my right, all ladies on my left. See if that tries to help out a little bit. And the ministry will come and pray for you. Amen. So if you need prayer in your body tonight, let's make sure you make your way to the front as we go to the Lord together in prayer, shall we? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we ask you tonight, God, to reach down in these situations. Lord, we ask you to touch in a special way. Hallelujah, Lord. We ask you tonight, God, to touch uh, uh, Brother Sailor's mom tonight. <coughs> touch him, Lord, and help her, Lord, in her problem and in her trial. Lord, we ask you, Lord, to allow her, Lord, to feel better with her situation, oh God. Help her, Lord, to know and to understand a few things, Lord. Uh, we pray tonight, God, that you move in a mighty way, Lord. Uh, help her, Lord, with her teeth problem, Lord. Uh, help her, God, not to feel bad, Lord. Uh, help her, Lord, to be able to eat like she feels like she needs to, Lord. Uh, I pray tonight, God, that you touch Rose Henry. Been sick for a few days, a few years, Lord, uh, having some problems in her health, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to move upon that for Forrest Murray needs a, a touch in his body, healing uh, pain and wants to be uh, in a situation, Lord, where he has no hope. Uh, but Lord, we know the hope, Lord, that you can give. Uh, Lord, we pray tonight, God, uh, for, uh, for little Alexander, Lord, that you touch uh, in a mighty way upon him, Lord. Uh, moving upon in his body right now, God, uh, touch him in a special way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. I believe you're my healer. I believe you are all I need. Oh, you are all I need, Lord. Jesus. I believe.
with the waves of the Holy Ghost. Let it filter through you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. entertain this for just a moment. I want you just to be quiet. Don't say a word. Don't let out a praise. Don't let out any worship. I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about the least that God has done for you. Just the least. And as you think about that, see all of it being magnified as the things that you count greater that you know he's done but the very least that God has done for you and when that begins to overwhelm you I want you to throw your hands up in the air and I want you to worship him oh it ain't there yet you're not quite letting it bubble. We're talking about the God that cares for every hair on your head. For if he's seen the sparrow fall and has the hairs of your head numbered, how great is God? Just meditate. That's it. Now you're starting to get it. There it comes. There you go. The very least. For if he's worthy for this kind of praise, for the very least, how much more worthy is he for the greatest thing he's ever done for you? Somebody praise him right now. Somebody worship him right now. Oh.
Chapter 19, verse number 9. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel hath forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a steel small voice. I have preached before from this topic, but I feel led of the Lord tonight to talk about it. I want to preach to you, God sometimes whispers. For the same, would you pray? said, you can be seated. Praise God. The young man in this one church had lost his job. He didn't know which way to turn. So he went to see the pastor Pacing about the preacher's study, the young man ranted about his problem. Finally, he clenched his fist and shouted, I've begged God to say something to help me. Tell me, preacher, why doesn't God answer? The old preacher sat across the room and spoke something in reply, something so hushed, it was indistinguishable. 
the young man stepped across the room and said, What did you say? Preacher repeated himself, but in a tone as soft as a whisper. So the young man moved closer until he was leaning on the preacher's chair. Sorry, I still didn't hear you. With their heads bent together, the old preacher spoke one more time. Sometimes God whispers, he said, so we'll have to move closer to hear him. I wish God would speak so loudly that we could clearly hear what he was trying to say. We all want God's voice to thunder. Boom. Thus saith the Lord. We all want God to get on a PA system and drive down the street shouting the answer to our every question. We have no doubt in whatsoever we should do if God just opened up the room in our home when we are praying and he said, this is what you should do. Check one, check two, check three, check four. Rent a billboard by the CD drive or the, the interstate and post the instructions step by step of what you should do. Wish we could just sit down in our email, get that famous statement that says, you've got mail. Well, that's probably old. They don't say that no more. But that's my day. You've got mail. Click it open and look at the answer that God has said. This is what you should do. Or maybe we should just buy the new edition of a new book or get the next gospel in the Bible that would have everything that we need listed and clearly and concisely to what God has said. We all just wish that God would just bust into our world and give us some concrete answers to some nagging problems in our life. We wish why he could tell us why he hasn't chosen to heal us, why he's not chosen to meet some financial need, why he's not chosen to save our lost loved ones, why he does what he does so that we just wouldn't have any guesswork involved, so that we wouldn't have to try to justify the answer for God or come up with some kind of answer as why God hasn't. But yet, for whatever the reason may be, we're still sometimes left holding the bag, wanting to know why God. Most preachers, wouldn't have anything to talk about if God gave all the answers. I would be out of a job. You wouldn't need me if you could just click your email and get your answer. But I'm not here to say I'm your answer because there are times in my life that I get frustrated trying to figure out what God is doing. Why? what he wants me to do or if I, you know, what, you know, if he just only shouted out. Hey, I'm talking to you. If he gets memory loss with names like I do, I can't imagine him trying to call me down the stairs. Kit, Brett, I don't remember what your name is, but get down here. I'll holler for Ashton, and I really do mean Ashton, and here comes Braxton. Now, Kinsley, she doesn't have an excuse, because Ashton and Braxton, they can kind of sound alike when I'm yelling. But Kinsley sounds nothing like the other two at all. So she's got the worlds of all worst. But could you imagine if God just got up there and said, Sam, Trey, Crit, Tim, Merle, you know who I'm talking to. Get up here so you can listen to what I'm trying to say. 
I, I just can't imagine the kind of mind that God has to keep up with every single person's life at every time, any given time. How powerful it is to understand that God knows what you're going through and what I'm going through at the exact same time. I told somebody one time, I said, God knew you were going to have this disease before you were ever born thousands of years ago. So God created the herbs and the bacteria and whatever else that they put in the chemical and gave it to somebody to invent to give you the drug to help you through your disease until the time when that which is perfect has come. That's how awesome God is. You have a pill that took thousands upon thousands upon thousands of research and development that God created just so you could take it. Many times I feel like Job did. When he said it in Job chapter 9 verse 32. Listen to what Job says. For he is not a man as I am. That I should answer him. And we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any daysman or any interpreter betwixt us. That might lay his hand upon us both. That when or then would I speak and not fear him, but is it is not so with me. He is not a man like you are. You can't just walk up to him like I can, Sister Maria, and get conversations and get things laid out and get it all mailed down and answered and stapled and put a contract on it, sign your name, and it's done. That's not how God works. God's already put the plan in place, but he doesn't mean for us to sit around in a guessing game either. He means for us to understand his way in a way that we can understand it. Job said, because God's not speaking very clearly to me right now, I'm afraid I might be misinterpreting what he's saying. I wish someone could just come down here who could hear God and give me my answer. If he would shout, I'd understand it. If he'd just come down and tell me face to face, then I'd understand it. But right now, I can't hear or understand what God is saying. You ever found yourself in that situation? I know I'm not running the aisles tonight. I know I'm not getting you on your feet. I know I'm not, you know, preaching the house down as like a lot of people like to say. But let me just tell you something about anointing. You don't have to be yelling for the anointing to be flowing. Elijah found himself in a cave feeling sorry for himself. Now, I don't make fun of him because he felt sorry for himself. We all do that. My wife comes down to my cave. See, I have a cave in my house. It's my cave. I go down there. It's dark. It's cold. I love it. My kids don't, which makes it that much better. I go down there. When I need to relax and clear my mind, my books are right there. Everything I need to do to study is right there. My iPad is there. All that's right there. And I can just get up in my bed and relax. And there's times that my wife comes down there saying, well, what's wrong with you? Well, I had a bad day at work. Or my toe hurts. Or I've got a headache. Well, don't you think I got a headache too? I've been dealing with three kids all day. 
See, we all get pity parties. We all have our times where we just don't jive with one another. Or we don't jive with the answer. Or we don't really like the answer that's been given to us. So we go down there and we go. My sister used to have this inapt ability to hold her breath until she passed out. To get the answer she wanted. And my mom would frantically go crazy and smack her in the face. Trying to get her to get her breath. And she's going blue. My mom decided to fix that one day and let her hit the ground. She didn't do that no more. I wonder if we do that with God sometimes. Yo, give me a second. I can't catch my breath. <laughs> a pity party. We all have those pity parties. But what amazes me about this pity party is that God had just destroyed 450 prophets of Baal at the word of Elijah. In the middle of a drought, God himself, at the words of Elijah, taking several barrels of water, pouring them out on the ground, covering a sacrifice, God falls fire from heaven and licks up all of the water and destroys the prophets of Baal, and here goes Elijah. Well, what's wrong with you, Elijah? I'm the only one serving you. I don't get it. God's protecting you from Jezebel. God's showing you what he's able to do. I wouldn't even have the audacity to walk out there and dig a ditch. And get Justin to pour water all over it and say, now watch this. <laughs> I'd be afraid out of my mind that I'd look like an idiot. And yet, here's Elijah. He's not even worried about it. He's up there filing his fingernails, I'm just paraphrasing, <laughs> like this while they're praying to their God. Now watch this. And now he's having a pity party. It's like Pentecost. Now I'm going to preach. If the church ain't popping, if the right music ain't playing, if they're not playing the music we like, if he's not preaching about what gets me excited, if this ain't going on or if that going on, we're sitting down in our pews like, well, we just had one of them little mundane services. But sometimes God's really wanting to get on the inside of who you are and give you something better that the shout and the dance and the pop and the song is not really going to give you because in those moments, God can't whisper to you what you really need for your answer. Tomorrow, Jezebel said, you're dead. Elijah runs to the desert and says, oh God, take me now. An angel appears, feeds him, sends him out on a 40-day journey to Mount Oreb. And it's there where we find our prophet who's sitting there. So God wants to teach him a little life's lesson. Elijah had no problem when the fire's falling. Let me preach to you, Pentecostals. We're all right when we're dancing and shouting. We're all right when everything seems to be falling and the earth is shaking and the wind is blowing. The wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. 
just like the day of Pentecost, the wind is blowing and the fire's falling and, 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 and somebody's shouting and singing and, and this one's running around the aisles and this one's got her hair down and this one's twirling and, and oh, we're good about that stuff. But let God do what he wants to do. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I may have told you all this story before, but I'm going to tell you again because it fits in this point. There was this really up, uppity up level Pentecostal church, if there ever is one. And this church was going to be visited by a very renowned woman in the community. The pastor's wife had gotten word about this situation. And so here we come to the night of the church. And they always had this woman that sat on, let's say where Brother George is sitting, at the church. And her name was Sister Shout. Sister Shout, when a certain type time the rose, she'd get up and she'd go, Woo! And take off. So they were afraid to get the new woman anywhere close to where Sister Shout was because they didn't want to scare her off. And they set her on the opposite side of the church, let's say where Brother Justin is set. Now, the night comes, they've got their plan in place, and guess what? Sister Shout's late. It's kind of like it is around here on Sunday morning. If you're late, you probably can't find a seat. Been there? Done that. Wore the t-shirt. You know, if somebody's sitting in our seat here, we're pretty good about it. But in a lot of Pentecostal churches, they don't take that so well. <laughs> so guess what the only seat was available left in the house? Over here by where the lady was supposed to be sitting. And that's where Sister Shout sets that night. Well, so they don't make a scene. All of the predominant ladies in the church come up with a plan. The pastor's wife would point to the assistant pastor's wife. The assistant pastor's wife would then point to the music, somebody, to get somebody's attention if she went crazy. So here comes Sister Shout. The music starts. Woo! And she twirls and falls out in the spirit right in that lady's lap. So this pastor's wife looks over at the assistant pastor's wife. I got this. So she goes over there and she reaches down to get the lady and pull her up and then she goes, woo, and twirls and bam. Now she got two ladies in her lap. The pastor's wife is now getting ready to be frantic. She looks up at the piano player. The piano player assist, uh, motions at the assistant piano player, if you ever got one. They come up, take the keyboard. She goes down off the platform, reaches over to grab the, the first lady out of her lap, and whoo, bam, three ladies in her lap. Pastor's wife gets up. I got this. Straightens her clothes up. Walks over there to get these three ladies out of her lap. And then, whoo, and not only this time, and I'm adding to it a little bit, her hair falls down and starts slapping them in the face. But not really, but, you know, you get the idea. She's got four ladies in her lap. Did the woman run out of the church? No. True story. She had four ladies holding her down, huh? She got the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is why. She said, I've been looking for something like this my entire life. 
And not only did it fall in my lap once, but it fell in my lap four times. Let me tell you something about God. God's time frame's not on our time frame. God's answers are not always our answers. Uh, we may think we've got it all mapped out. We may think we've got the right information. We may think we've got what we need at that moment. Uh, but just as soon as you think you've got it figured out, uh, God changes it up a little bit. Uh, and he'll do what he needs to do when we're not doing what we're supposed to do. It's not always in the fire. It's not always in the earthquake. Uh, it's not always in the wind. Uh, but let let me tell you something, friend. Uh, if you've got your ears turned in uh, and then you're listening, uh, you will hear the still small voice of God. Somebody praise him right now. What God was saying is, I'm not always going to yell. I'm not always going to send the fire. I'm not always going to shake the earth. I'm sometimes going to send you to prison. I'm sometimes going to send you to the wilderness. I'm sometimes going to put you in a desert. I'm sometimes going to send you to a cave. But listen to my voice. Sometimes we program God. Do, 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 do. Sometimes we program our think. Sometimes we program our own hop and our holler. And I did say holler. Sometimes we program our own dance. I'm not saying that you shouldn't dance when you don't feel like it. I, you've heard me preach about you need to dance when you don't feel like it. But don't just be doing it so pe other people say, whoo. Boy, we had some church tonight. There's a reason sometimes why God doesn't want to draw attention to you. And why he's calling you to focus on him. See, I have 30% hearing loss. My wife gets angry at me because I can't hear what she's saying sometimes. You heard me say this. I have to sometimes be looking at your face to really understand what you're trying to say. Because you may have said, the dark cow on the other side of the moon, and I might have thought you said, holy cow, there's a moon. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a moon. No, I'm talking about the dark cow on the other side of the moon. What dark? What are you talking about? And really, you never said any of that stuff, but that's what I heard. If we could just listen to what God has to say. <laughs> but in order to do that, we've got to find ourselves getting closer to Him. For God is able to do abundantly above all more than we could ever ask or think. And if we could just tune our ears into what God is trying to tell us and understand that sometimes God is just whispering to us not because we are anything other than he wants to draw us closer to him. He wants you in the same room as him. He wants you in his circle. He wants you in a place where he can talk to you and tell you about the goodness of the things that he has, that he He's the owner of the cattle of a thousand hills. Uh, that he's ready to open the storehouses of heaven. But in order for him to tell you that, you've got to move where he is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
We're so lit. We're so caught up in a society that's overwhelmed and flooded by noise, clutter, and confusion. We call it the information age. But there's less communication. There's a statistic out that tells us that there's been more information produced in the last 30 years than that was ever produced 5,000 years previous to the last 30. The New York Times contains more information than the average person can likely come across during a lifetime in the 17th century. One newspaper contains more information than anybody found out in the 17th century in their entire lifetime. The first modern computer was built in 1944. It took up more space than a tractor trailer, weighed more than 17 Chevrolet Camaros, and was consumed by 144,000 watts of electricity and could execute no more than 5,000 basic arithmetic operations per second. When the 486 processor came out, and that was a long time ago, it was built on a piece of silicon about the size of a dime, weighed less than a pack of sweet and low, was less than two watts of electricity, and that machine calculated over 54 million instructions per second. If you have a digital watch on, you wear more technology on your wrist than existed in the world before 1961. We're used to having what we want. We're used to receiving a piece of information when we need it. And we want to treat God like the internet, open up a heavenly search engine, type in our question, push a button, and get our answer. Sometimes God doesn't respond immediately. I forget the statistic. But you can put in like a word on YouTube. And, and, and not YouTube, I'm sorry. On Google. And it will tell you at the bottom of the page how many websites it brings up and in how many milliseconds. We're not talking about four or five pages. We're talking about millions of pages that that one word is processed in milliseconds. So think about this. In the information age that we live in, where we can just about find out anything we want to in the blink of an eye, how frustrating it is when we don't get an answer from the God that created all technology. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You mean God created the internet? Well, yeah. All things came from him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Oh, well, you know, that's really out there. Well, yeah, you know, you wouldn't be here without him. Remember the joke about get your own dirt? Well, we can create life without you, God. We don't need you. Okay, get your own dirt. <laughs> Even in the information age that we live, God still chooses to whisper. He still chooses to speak in a still small voice. That's why David said in Psalms 46 and 10, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the, uh, the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. Paul makes an interesting appeal in Thessalonians. Uh, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and 11. And that ye study to be quiet. And to do your own business and to do the work with your own hands uh, as we commanded you. You know why sometimes you can't hear God talk? 
It's because you're doing all the talking. You ever been in a conversation where you can't get a word in edgewise? They'll stop in a minute. I can literally take the phone away from my head with certain people and do some stuff and just say, "Uh uh-huh, every once in a while, and they never miss a beat. I'm not talking about, about anybody in this church. They live thousands of miles away from here. But that's how we pray to God. Oh, God, you know about this, and you know about that, and you hear this, and you know this, and, and you just keep going and on and on. And it's sincere. Don't get me wrong. You're praying. You're getting involved, but you're not listening. Your prayer time shouldn't be just about how many words you can say in your prayer. Sometimes your prayer time needs to be putting you on a pair of earphones, uh, listening to a little bit of music, closing your eyes and meditating on what God is trying to tell you back. Paul said we need to study to be quiet. No wonder he was so against vain repetitions. I remember being young, a lot younger than I am now. And I went to my first prayer meeting. And I got down on my knees to try to pray. And all I caught myself doing was listening to everybody else pray. And I'd say, what he said, God, what he said, and a little bit of what he said, and a whole lot of what he said, because everybody was really going at it. And it wasn't until several years later that one time I, I, I thought I had all the answers. I thought I had arrived. And I was at a youth camp, and I was preaching the day services. And the nighttime evangelist came and laid hands on me, and he says, you're a good preacher, but until you let God preach through you, you'll never be effective. See, there's a difference in being a good preacher and letting God do the work. And I hit the floor and I was out. I don't know how long I was out. And that Friday night, he couldn't be there to preach. So they asked me to do it. <sighs> I get to preach. 500 people. Woohoo! And then I got sick with a fever, cold, congestion. One of them summer colds. I don't like them things. Give me the cold in the winter anytime. But in the summer, I'm too hot as it is, and I certainly don't want to cover up. And I was hot and didn't feel good. I was laying on the couch. I didn't have time to put one note on a piece of paper. I was that sick. But I would not because I felt something from God. And I got up and preached. And I preached for 45 minutes without one piece of notes. And I don't even know where they came from. But that's when I learned that sometimes God wants to speak. Let me say this, children of God. As the music comes. When we are so involved with how we live rather than how he lives. When we are so involved 
with how we're supposed to have church rather than just allowing us to have church. When we get so wrapped up that the preacher has to have me standing every single time in order for me to be engaged. Then we're missing the point. church is what it is but God is who we're supposed to be serving and some of you have been begging for answers for a long time and they haven't come And tonight, God wants you to know this one thing. That sometimes he whispers to draw you close. So that he'll never let you go. I believe the song says, Something to that effect. Being close to God and never letting us go. Laying it all down. When you have drawn yourself close to Him, A friend that sticketh closer than a brother, that lays his life down for his friends. When you're that close to him, you can talk to him about anything. But we have trouble doing that. Because we want our answer to come to us from a distance. There's no commitment in distance. Hey, this is what you need to do. you invade personal space when there's whisper. And you usually only whisper to the ones that you're closest to. Now I'm preaching to somebody. If you're not hearing God whisper, you've not gotten into that relationship with him yet. Even Elijah had to learn that. Sometimes God whispers to draw you close. To pull you in. To get you in his realm. night we need to open our ears and let and let him talk to us so I'm going to open this altar you just need to come and listen to the Lord for just a few moments. Maybe you just need just to listen. That's it, but there's others.
me just listen to you, Lord. Draw yourself into him.
Lord, I kneel at your feet. Take me to the holy place. Take me to the holy place. My soul longs for you.
You're the reason that I live, reason that I see, with all I am.
times Daddy knows what to say See, we, we get on to our adolescent children For thinking they know it all And yet we walk with our own cell phones that I carry around all the time, and I want to throw both of them through a wall. <laughs> when it comes to God, you need a cell phone. You got a direct line to Him anytime you want to. But instead of that old call Him up, call Him up, tell Him what you want. Maybe you need to pay him a visit. Because some things are better said not on a telephone. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's all stand together. We want to congratulate on the future espousal of Brother Tim and Sister Amanda. And we've got something very special for them out in the fellowship hall within the next few minutes or so. I do need to tell the board real quickly, I don't need you mingling because we have that very important meeting that I told you about earlier. So if you can make it straight to my office so that we can try to knock this thing out within five to ten minutes, um, that way we can all get over to the cake in a timely manner. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's lift our hands together. Father, we thank you, Lord. We praise you. We lift you up. We thank you for your word. I ask you tonight, God, to reach down into this place and into this house and touch us. Touch us in a special way. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, help us to grow closer to you, to listen to you as you whisper to draw us closer. And I say that in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Fellowship with one another. Next few minutes, make your way out to the fellowship hall. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Board members, if you'll make your way downstairs now. Thank you.